Now I've got respect for myself. And don't get me wrong. I know what boys can be like. Thinking they're someone. That's boys the old world over. It all started when I met Samir. I was walking through the college canteen. My bag snapped. My books just went everywhere. It was so embarrassing. Everyone was staring and laughing at me. Ha ha! ha. Everyone except this one boy. He came over. And he helped me. He was so good looking. I couldn't believe I'd never seen him before. Once all my books were picked up, he went back to his table. And I went to get my lunch. A meal deal, right? One pound eighty for a can of Coke, a bacon sandwich, and some fruit. <laughs> like I ever ate fruit. So I went over to the table and I threw him the apple. I said, thanks for helping. He said it was okay. But then he said he couldn't eat the apple because he was fasting. And well, I didn't really know what he meant. So he started to explain all about his religion. And it was really interesting. And the more he spoke, the more I liked him. I loved his accent and his eyes. He was so cute. But I knew nothing had never come of it. I mean, he was way too shy to ask me out. And well, I wasn't going to ask him out, was I? What if he'd have said no? I'd never be able to speak to him again. So I decided we should just be friends. We became best mates. We had a right laugh and everything. And one day, we decided to go to the park for a picnic. He was always doing daft stuff like that. So when we got there, we just lay out this blanket and we sat there chatting and laughing. And then he started tickling me. <laughs> and then he kissed me. I couldn't believe it. And well, since then, we've been inseparable. It's not all been a bed of roses, though. I went home to tell my dad. I got a serious boyfriend from Afghanistan. And he flipped. He said, No daughter of mine is going out of one of them. And when I thought it couldn't get any worse, my brothers came in. They started screaming and shouting at me. It's got nothing to do with you, who I want to go out with, so why don't you just stay out of it? But my brother, he grabbed me by the hair and he banged my head off the wall. Ah! And then my dad stepped in. Whew. I was so happy. I thought he was going to stick up for me, like he always does. I'm daddy's little girl. But when I turned to look at him, he punched me. My nose just popped and blood went everywhere. And then he grabbed me and he threw me out of the house. My brothers were up at the window throwing down my clothes. Why are they being like this? I know one thing though. I wasn't going to let it split me and Samir up. I went to college and I told them everything that had happened at home. They said, every young person's got the right to be protected from abuse. They told me not to worry. You should call the police. You could get your dad and brothers done for assault. <laughs> but I couldn't do that. They are still my family. The college were great though. They gave me loads of support and counselling. And they helped me find somewhere to stay. 
Wasn't brilliant in the refuge at first, but... I've got my own flat now. And it's great. Because I can just be myself. On my wedding day, I want to run. Run and just run. And I couldn't. But it's too late then. Yeah. Because then you, it, it, your parents say it's no longer yeah. a problem. You're married now, now it should be, you're yeah. in those responsibility to sort their yeah. son out. So, you know, you, you just have to put yeah. up with it kind of thing. My, my dad, he said, um, you know, there's nothing we can do now. I've done my bit as a father. You married you off and now it's, your, it's up to you now to settle in your own home and work things out and you have no choice. She came to me begging for help. I thought something really bad had happened. She was in a right state, in a flood of tears, talking gibberish. I couldn't understand a word she was saying. She was proper making herself sick. So I took hold of her and sat her down. And I talked to her and asked her what was the problem. She said she was getting married. So I stared into her red, sore eyes. And I laughed out loud. I couldn't believe she was making a big fuss over this. She must have known she was getting married. Why do you think we were all here? But she didn't see the funny side to it. She kept saying stupid things like she was going to run away. Oh, she was going to kill herself. She went through with it all. And then she started pleading with me and saying, Zach, you've got to help me. I don't know what to do. I don't want to marry Rafiq. It's the last thing you ever want to see. Is your sister crying? She's just my kid's sister. She kept saying to me how I promised to stick by her. And I would. A promise is a promise. Look, don't worry. I'll go and speak to Dad about it. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Okay. So I went and spoke to Dad. And for the first time ever, he treated me like a proper man. He put his hand round my shoulder and we walked and chatted. He explained and made me understand the whole idea of Izzard, the family, the community, our responsibilities and duties, and why she loved to marry Rafiq. And then he said, a son is like a bar of gold. If it falls into the dirt, pick it up and clean it off and it is still precious forever. But a daughter is like a white piece of silk. If it falls into the dirt, it is ruined forever. You might as well throw it away. And then it all made sense. Typical Sophie kicking fuss over nothing, causing rifts between mum and dad, causing unnecessary arguments within a family. Stupid little cow. She's going to marry Rafiq whether she liked it or not. What happened? Did you speak to dad? What did he say? You liar! Mum, no, look, Zach, Mum told me this morning I've got to marry Rafiq. Only reason why you don't want to marry Rafiq it's because you're going out with one of them back at home. Is that what they're saying? Zach, don't, don't listen to them. <laughs> they're... Everyone's talking about you. Not just you. The whole community's talking about the family. Just, just get into your head. Zach, why are you being like this? They're lying. 
Give me your phone. What? I said, give me your mobile phone. <laughs> Who are you? My dad? Forget it. The only way you're leaving this room is a married woman. Guess what? I'm pregnant. But don't worry, I'm still a good Muslim. Look, I'm married. I couldn't wait to tell Samir at first. But when I did, he seemed really upset. He said we'd done something really wrong and that it was going to bring shame on his family. Well, I was really worried about him, so I went to see the imam. He was great. He made me feel really welcome. I explained everything to him about how happy I was and how sad Samir was. He did give me a bit of a telling off though. He said, you shouldn't be making babies outside of marriage. And he's probably right. But what's done is done. And then he asked all the questions like, do you love him and does he love you? And I said, yeah, of course we do. And then he said, well, the best thing to do for both of you and the baby is to get married, if that's what you both want. So within a couple of days, the Nakar was signed and Samir made an honest woman of me. And I think I make a really good wife. I know where to buy all the best halal meat Salam alaikum. And I'm turning out to be a great cook. Even if I do say so myself. It's not all been great though. I used to have loads of mates before. But now it's like they've all turned against me. And I know everyone's talking behind my back. Some, even to my face. I wanted to call my dad to tell him I was getting married, but I heard he never wants to see me again. Then he's too ashamed to even go down the pub. They're in his eyes. I was dead. But I thought my mum would at least want to speak to me. But when I saw her uptown, she just walked straight past me. And give me a dirty look. My little sister was with her and I tried to wave but my mum just took her arm and pulled her away. Well stuff them if they go and be like that. It's their problem, not mine. As long as I've got Samir and the baby, everything's going to be fine. They are my family now. I'm glad she's sleeping now. She's been crying for hours. Crying so much. She came round yesterday with a bag of her stuff and asked if she could stay for a few days. And I said, of course, without even asking my parents. They're away at the moment, you see. But I know they won't mind. Because they love her. She's like one of the family. She's like my sister. I am worried about her though, because she just looks so pale and sad. 
And Sophie is always smiling and having a laugh, so it's easy to tell when something's up with her. She told me all about a holiday. She told me everything, but I don't really understand it. Married? Sophie? She says she's never getting married. She says marriage is for girly girls. And she's definitely not one of them. Well, now she's... She's like a woman. How can you be married if you don't want to be? It doesn't make sense. I mean, I know that your parents make you do stuff sometimes you don't want to do. Like eating up all of your dinner if you want to have dessert or making sure your homework's done before you go out. But this... And she said to me, if Zach calls, to say that she's not in and not to answer the door to him. But he's her brother. They're like best mates. And at college, all of the lecturers were asking me where she was. And her personal tutor said to me, if she's not back by next week, she won't be able to do her second year A-levels. But Sophie loves college. And I can't stand the thought of being there without her. We do everything together. So I texted her when she was on holiday, but I never got a reply. And I just thought, well, she must be having a great time. You know what they say, no news is good news and all. I'm glad she's here now. She's safe here. And she can stay as long as she likes.